Hello guys, this is George Kamiti. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to learn how to select a beam section in grade S275 steer to BS5950. The question of the day is, the simply supported beam in figure 4.11 supports uniformly distributed characteristic dead and imposed loads of 5 kN per meter each, as well as a characteristic imposed point load of 30 kN at the mid-span of the beam. Assuming the beam is fully laterally restrained and there is nominal torsional restrain at supports, select a suitable universal beam section in grade S275 steer to satisfy bending and shear considerations. So we got a diagram there showing a simply supported beam that is subjected to a point load of 30 kN which is imposed and two UDLs, one dead, the other one is imposed, both 5 kN per meter. So join me as we tackle this question together. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. The first step is the uh, calculation of the design bending moment and the shear force. This beam is simply supported and it is subjected to a point load of 30 kN, which is an imposed load, a 5 kN per meter uniformly distributed load, which is a dead load, and another 5 kN per meter imposed load, which is also a UDL. So beginning with the determination of the total loading, so that we can use it to determine the design bending moment, the total loading W, or in other words, what we call the design load will be given by 1.4 gk plus 1.6 qk where gk is the dead load and qk represents the imposed or the live load so in this case w will be given by we got a 30 kN uh, imposed load so that is going to be 30 times 1.6 1.6 gk gk is the imposed load we are going to add these two a dead load of 5 kN per meter so we multiply that by 1.4 gk is the dead load times 1.4 we add an imposed UDL of 5 kN per meter. Since it is imposed, we multiply by 1.6. Then we multiply that by the span, which is 10 meters. Remember, when you multiply UDL times span, it usually gives you a point load that usually acts at the center of the, law, the beam under consideration. So in this case, when we multiply that E by 1.6, that gives us 48. We add that to 5 times 1.4, that happens to be 7. 5 times 1.6, that is 8. And then we multiply by the span 10 meters. So that is going to give us a point load of 48 plus 7 plus 8, that is 15 times 10. Therefore, UDL of 15 times the span 10 to give us a point load acting at the central of the beam. So this is going to be 48 plus 150. And the design load 
is going to be 198 kilonewtons. Therefore, 198 kilonewtons, that is the design load. Now, since the, the structure is symmetrical, that means that the 30 kilonewton imposed load is subjected at the center, and then we have a UDL. There, therefore, the two supports, A and B, are sharing the total load equally. And therefore, that means that the reaction at A will be equal to the reaction at B, which in this case will be the total design load divided by 2, since the two supports are going to share this load equally. Since we have said the structure is symmetrical. Therefore, that is going to be 198 divided by 2 which happens to be 99 kilo newtons. Therefore, the reaction at A is going to be 99 kilo newtons, as well as the reaction at B, 99 kilo newtons. And remember, reactions are equal to shear forces. Therefore, the shear force at A is 99 kilo newtons, that one at B, is 98 kilonewtons as well. So we have uh, calculated the design uh, load as well as the shear force. The next thing we are going to determine is the central bending moment. That is the bending moment at the center of this uh, beam. And in this case, the central bending moment, so let's call that central bending moment, moment and the central bending moment in this case will be given by WL over 4 that is the point load subjected at the center divided by 4 remember that uh, <clears throat> that uh, topic of uh, bending moment and shear force you learn it in uh, structures one. Then we have a UDL subjected over the entire span of this beam, and that is going to be given by WL squared over 8. Therefore, the central bending moment will be given by W, which is the imposed load and in that case 1.4 i mean 1.6 qk so that is going to be 30 times 1.6 which is 48 so we got 48 multiply by the span 10 then divide this by 4 plus w is 15 then we multiply by the square of the span then we divide by 8 so that is going to be 15 times L squared, that is 10 squared, divide this by 8. So this is going to give us 480 divided by 4, that definitely is 120, plus 15 times 10 squared over 8, that is 1500 divided by 8, which is 187.5. And that gives us a central bending moment of 307.5 kilo newton meter. And therefore, that is what we are calling the design bending moment. So we are done with the we are done with the part one or step. Number one, that is determination of the design bending moment as well as the shear force. Step number two is the initial section selection. Therefore, we go to step number two, which is initial section 
selection. And in this step, we need to calculate what we call the plastic modulus, which we are going to use to select a suitable uh, section for this beam. Therefore, for the initial uh, section selection, we need what we call the plastic modulus, which is Sx. And plastic modulus in this case should be greater than the design bending moment divided by Py. And in this case, <coughs> Py is the design strength of steel. And the design strength of uh, steel here is 275 newtons per square millimeter. Therefore, the plastic modulus will be given by the design bending moment, which is 307.5 kilonewtons meter. We convert that to newton millimeters since the Design strength of uh, this steel is given by newtons per square millimeters. Therefore, that will be 3 of 7.5 times 10 raised to the power of 6 kilonewtons to newtons. That is 1,000 meters to millimeters. That is another 1,000, making it a million. We divide this by 275 newtons per square millimeter, which is the design strength of steel. When we do that, we are going to have the plastic modulus being equal to 1.118 times 10 raised to the power of 6 cubic millimeters. Now, from the tables, that is a table we call Appendix B, it usually gives the plastic modulus in cubic centimeters. Therefore, we are going to convert this cubic millimeters into cubic centimeters and that is going to be 1,118 cubic centimeters. Therefore, that is the plastic modulus for this section. Therefore, from the steel tables, that is Appendix B, we can select about three or so sections and the sections we are going to have based on this. Remember, the section we are going to select must have a plastic modulus which is greater than 1118 cubic centimeter. Therefore, from Appendix B, from Appendix B, let's select three suitable sections, and then from those three, we choose one which is most suitable. The first section that we can select will have the following. Uh, serial size that is 356 by 171 by 67 u b and its plastic modulus is 1210 cubic centimeters The second section that we can select from Appendix B will have the serial size of 406 by 178 by 60 UB. And in this case, UB stands for Universal Beam. This one has got a plastic modulus of 1,190 cubic centimeters. The third section that we can select
is a, a section with serial size of 457 by 152 by 60 universal beam with a plastic modulus of 1280 cubic centimeters. By the look of things, let's try to work with the, the second section, that is 06 by 178 by 60 UB with plastic modulus of 1190 cubic centimeters. Therefore, after selecting section 2, we need to classify the section. Therefore, we go to step number 3, that is the section classification. So, step number 3, step 3, uh, section classification. Section classification. And in this case, we need to classify the section and see whether it is uh, falling under plastic, compact, or semi compact. And for us to classify this section, we need the ratio B over T. That is a uh, the what we call the modular ratio for the web and in this case sorry b over t is for the flange and it is 6.95 from the tables so when you look at the section 46 by 178 by 60 you will find that b over t for the flange is uh, 6.95 and d over t for the web is uh, 46.2 when you compare this one, from the tables, we need to know that that is a table 4.4. We need to know that B over T, that is that modular ratio, should be less than or equal to 9 times a constant E. And the constant E is usually given by 275 divided by PY raised to the power of a half and in this case the constant e will be 275 over py which is the strength of steel it is 275 then you raise to the power of a half that happens to be one and therefore 69 uh, 6.95 is less than nine nine times one is nine therefore uh, for such a section, the class is class 1 plastic. Because for class 1 plastic, BT, B over T should be less than or equal to 9 times the constant E, D over T. And the modular ratio D over T is 46.2. This one should be less than all equal to 80 times a constant e and definitely e the constant e is one making d over t to be less than uh, 80 46.2 is less than 80 and therefore in such a case the web is falling under class one plastic therefore the section 406 that is the section 2 by 178 by 60 UB is plastic. That is all you can say. It is class 1, which in this case is plastic. Table 4.4 .4 is the one that uh, usually classifies sections either in plastic, compact, or semi-compact. Good. After suitably classifying the section, the step number four, the next step is 
determination of the shear strength. Therefore, we go to shear strength. Shear strength. And in this case, the shear strength Fv should be less than or equal to shear capacity Pv. And Pv is usually given by 0 0.6 Py times Av, where Py is the design strength of steel and Av is what we call the shear area. And the shear area is usually given by T, the thickness of the web, times D, the depth of the section. So in this case, the shear capacity will be given by 0 0.6 times Py, strength of steel, 275 newtons per square millimeter. T from uh, the tables from appendix B, the thickness of the web is 7.8, and the depth of the section is 406.4 millimeters, both of them in millimeters. From the table, you find that the depth of the section is 406.4 millimeters and the thickness of the web is 7.8 millimeters as well. And this is going to give us a shear capacity of 523 times 10 raised to the power of 3 newtons. Converting that to kilonewtons, that is going to be 523 kilo newtons so when you compare this one with the shear force you find that the shear force which is 99 kilo newtons is less than pv which is 523 kilo newtons and therefore that section cannot fail as a result of excessive shear we also know, need to know whether we are dealing with the uh, low shear rod or high shear rod and for us to know the size of the shear rod we are dealing with f v should be less than 0 0.6 pv and therefore 0 0.6 pv will be equal to 0 0.6 times pv which is 523 and 0 0.6 times uh, 523, that happens to be 314 kilo newtons. And therefore, you can see that Fv, which is 99 kilo newtons, is less than 314 kilo newtons. Therefore, this is a low shear load. It is a low shear load. So, we are done with the shear strength which is uh, the step number four. From there, you are going to go to step number five. And step number five is bending moment. So we go to step five. And step five is bending moment. So bending moment. Under bending moment, we need to determine what we call the bending capacity. And in this case, the bending capacity of this section, which is MC, is usually given by PYS. That is the design strength of steel times the plastic modulus, which is S. Actually, it is from this formula. You make M the subject. So, this is going to give us a moment capacity of 275 newtons per square millimeters times from the appendix B from the tables, the plastic modulus is 1190 cubic centimeters. We convert that to cubic millimeters. That is multiplying this by a thousand. And this is going to give us a 
bending capacity of 327 times 10 less to the power of 6 newtons millimeters. So I'd convert that to kilo newtons meter, that is going to be, you divide this by 10 less to the power of 6, and that is going to give us 327 kilo newtons meter. So that is the moment capacity. We know that <clears throat> the moment capacity should always be less than or equal to 1.2 P, Y, Z, where Z is what we call the section modulus or the elastic modulus of this section, elastic modulus of the section. So for class uh, 1 and 2, MC should always be less than or equal to 1.2 P, Y, the design strength of steel times Z, which is the elastic modulus for the section. And therefore, 1.2 times Py, which is 275 newtons per square millimeters, times Z, which is from the tables 1060. Uh, we convert that to millimeters, which will be 10 raised to the power of 3. And that happens to be 349.8 times 10 raised to the power of 6 newtons millimeters. Converting that to kilo newton meter, that is dividing this by 10 raised to the power of 6, that is going to be 349.8 kilo newtons meter. And you find that the moment capacity, MC, which is uh, 327, is less than 349.8 kilo newton meters and therefore the section is satisfactory and that is quite okay then we need to calculate what we call the extra moment due to the self weight of the section therefore the extra moment due to self weight of the section extra moment due to self-weight of the section, self-weight. This will be given by MSW, moment due to self-weight of the section, will be given by 1.6. Remember, self-weight is a dead load. Actually, it is going to be 1.4 GK. So, the GK is going to be 60 because... The section that we selected, which is the second section, have got a mass per meter of 60. So we can say this is 60 kilograms per meter. So that 60 kilograms per meter, we need to convert it to newtons. To kilonewtons, I mean. So this is going to be 60. Converting a mass to weight weight is given by mass times gravity therefore we have a mass of 60 kilograms we multiply by 9.8 actually this is a kilograms per meter and this one is newtons per kgs so when you multiply 60 by the gravity that is going to give us 0 0.5 i mean that is going to give us 588 0.6 newtons per meter and then we divide by a thousand to convert it to kilo newtons per meter therefore we have 1.4 remember for a dead load we usually have 1.4 we multiply by gk and the gk is the dead load in this case times 60 mass per kg times gravity 9.8 and then we divide this by a thousand to convert to kilonewtons per meter and then we multiply this to L squared divided 
by 8. Remember, the self weight is a uniformly distributed rod. It is a UDL. Therefore, for a UDL, the central moment is given by WL squared over 8. So the whole of this part is W. Then we are going to multiply that by L squared over 8. And therefore, that is going to be 1.4 into 0 0.5. 8886 and then we multiply this by the span L squared we divide by 8 and that is going to give us moment due to self weight of this beam to be 300 uh, I mean to be 10.3 kilo newtons meter 10.3 kilo newtons meter therefore the total imposed moment, total moment, MT, will be given by the design moment plus the moment due to self-weight of the beam. The design moment uh, was 307.5 kilonewtons meter. We had the moment due to self-weight of the beam, which is 10.3 kilonewtons meter. And that's going to give us MT of 317.8 kilo newtons meter. We find this one, the total imposed moment being less than 327 kilo newton meter. And 327 kilo newton meter is the moment capacity therefore since the total imposed moment is less than the moment capacity then the proposed section is uh, suitable in terms of bending moment and therefore we are done with the fifth uh, step or designing of that particular beam that we have there so we are remaining with the step number six, seven, and eight. Remember, step number six is deflection checks. Step number seven is checks on web bearing and buckling. And finally, step number eight is lateral torsional buckling. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to carry out the next step in our next lesson. Subscribe and thank you for your support. See you in yet another lesson.